The Portuguese in the 16th century were the first to buy slaves from West African slavers and transported them across the Atlantic. In 1526, they completed the first transatlantic slave voyage to Brazil, and other Europeans soon followed. Ivory, gold, and other trade resources attracted Europeans to West Africa. Slavery existed in Africa before Europeans arrived. A main cause of trade uh, was the colonies that European countries were starting to develop. In America, for instance, which was a colony of England, there was a demand for many laborers for the sugar, tobacco, and cotton plantations. It is important to recognize that the slavery of the transatlantic slave trade was different from any slave trade before or since. The central idea of race became so central to the trade. Now, here are four points about the transatlantic slave trade that we think people need to understand. The thing that distinguishes slavery in Africa from Atlantic slavery is race. Europeans set in motion a system of slavery that was predicated on the idea that certain people were marked as enslavable. This source describes Oloda Ekwano being separated from his family at just 11 years old. If you wish to read this source, you can pause the video now. In this image, you can clearly see that the adults and the children were sold in the same way. In 2019, a huge grave of 150 skeletons of Africans of people were found in Lagos, Portugal. As you can see by the awkward positions, they were thrown carelessly into the grave. Historian Maria Teresa Ferreira explains as their humanity was not recognized, the corpses were treated as animal remains, summarily buried in any free field or dumped into the garbage. In this first image, they are washing diamonds in a field of sorts. However, in the second and third images, you can tell they are working in mines. Uh, this makes sense, as most of the products sold as a result of those enslaved people's work were luxurious items such as diamonds and gold, which they are shown, shown mining for in the last two images. Men and women were separated on the ship, with the men being on the bottom. With the roof being only four feet tall, this meant they could not stand. It smelled horrible and they even saw each other die on board. <laughs> Usually they didn't move for 80 days. This is an image showing how 292 enslaved people would be loaded into the ship. This shows a British slave ship, but the Portuguese ones would have been very similar. 15% of Africans forced to travel to the Americas would die from the terrible conditions on the voyage. This was at least 2 million people. The transatlantic slave trade was only about half the total slave trade out of Africa. From AD 650 to 1900, Islamic traders are estimated to have exported 10 million slaves into northern Africa, Arabia, Yemen, Iraq, Iran, and India. They were shipped across the Sahara Desert, the Red Sea, and the Indian Ocean. Many millions were also enslaved, but kept on the continent of Africa. When we picture slavery, we habitually draw upon images of the American South. In fact, less than 5% of the victims of transatlantic slavery were landed on the coast of the present-day United States. Most enslaved Africans were carried to the Caribbean or to Brazil. In 1774, the influential revolutionary Fairfax Resolves called for an end to the wicked, cruel, and unnatural Atlantic slave trade. During the Revolutionary War, the United Colonies all pledged to ban their involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. In January 1807, with a self-sustaining population of over 4 million enslaved people in the South, some Southern Congression joined with the North, voting to abolish African slave trade. An act became effective in January 1808. The slave trade started a lot earlier than you think. The Portuguese began trafficking American captives in the 1440s. In England, the Wars of Roses had yet to begin. It also wasn't intentionally the transatlantic slave trade. In the early days, enslaved Africans were brought to Portugal or to the Atlantic islands like Medeira to work on agriculture. 